anxietycenter.com. The last time I was uh, on the Skype call, I think it was in November. Um, well, I'm sorry. You I, recommended. You, you cut out just for a moment there. I didn't hear can you, what you said. I can hear you now. Uh, so, um, yeah, I was the last time here on uh, November, mm -hmm. and um, you recommended a book to me, which was about uh, boundaries. Mm -hmm. And um, it really made a difference. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. But there are still some aspects I would like to address. For example, um, you talk a lot about changing behaviors, unhealthy uh, behaviors. Mm -hmm. And there is especially one aspect within me, which is like um, achieving things, mm -hmm. which is not based on people pleasing you. Mm -hmm. Get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm not really a people pleaser anymore because I worked on it like for a year. Mm -hmm. Good <laughs> but, for you, yeah. Um, uh, but there is still this um, massive aspect aspect of achieving things, um, getting through my uh, degree really quickly and um, uh, earning money. And if there is even a, like the thought of failing in career, it's just like um, I don't like it. <laughs> gotcha. Sure. Yeah, so I don't I don't know what so and. Um, uh, Every time I, because there are some upcoming events, I'm still a student and there's marriage coming up and the wedding mm -hmm. and um, it stresses me kind of. And I'm always thinking about how can I get money? How can I get more money? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so how do I address this aspect? Uh, well, I would have to know much more about the reasons for the pursuit yeah. of the things you want to do. Oh. It's always going to come down to that. There, there, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there is, I guess there's one reason because um, my dad didn't work for uh, since I was 10 mm -hmm. years old. He dropped off work and um, it was always really diff difficult. And I always, like, uh. he used to be a businessman, but yep. um, before I was born and he was really successful, but, you know, uh, uh, um, in my childhood, I did. I just uh, always saw him um, struggling and just complaining. And at the end of it, um, he was just, um, yeah, unemployed until yeah. now. So gotcha. it was always about money and money worries and money issues. So there uh, you go. Okay, that's what I think. All right, yeah. uh, give me one moment here. So when we grow up in that environment, a number of things happen, especially if it's reinforced by what the parent is saying about money. Uh, if it's if the conversation is all about money, then that becomes an important value to us, uh, and it's it's not something we deliberately take on. It's something that we sort of inherit as we go because we're, we've been immersed in it so often. So that becomes an important value. And then the other part of this too is if we we grew up in a family where there was a shortage of money, we see how it negatively impacted the family, and then we decide that we don't want that ever happen to our family. So then we become hyper vigilant about making money and being successful. So those are the beliefs that drive the behavior. So how does a person move away from that? If we don't want to be all consumed with that and putting extra stress on ourselves and all that, uh, well, then it requires challenging the beliefs. Um, again, without knowing a whole lot more about you, it's tough to say because I'm sure there's other beliefs that are attached. But one thing we can do is uh, you can certainly recognize that your dad's life isn't yours. His circumstances aren't yours. Uh, if there's something you can learn from his circumstances over the course of time, then maybe you can, you know, adapt to that or compensate for that in some way. Uh, for example, if there was a, a, a training thing that your dad didn't do that could have helped them, that you watch for new training opportunities. If it was a business decision that didn't work out right, you can say, okay, what can I learn from the business thing? So there's things we can learn from it, but we don't want to stress about it. So. It's great to you know set um, goals and have ambitions for things, but if it's driving our anxiety, then we've gone too far. So then we have to pull back. So looking at just a few things I'd mentioned, what kinds of things do you think you could do, being aware of where this motivation is coming from, that you could do to take some of the pressure off yourself? Oh, I really don't know. Okay. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, uh, because, uh, as I mentioned, I'm right now I'm still my um, bachelor's mm -hmm. and I'm uh, to complete, and 
than my masters and um and then there is still a money issue <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so um i i really don't know so yeah yeah are you working with any of our therapists at all um no because um yeah be money thing probably yeah. right now it's difficult yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah student trying to get through and get set up i know it's tough uh, because it's, there's a lot of things that I would need to know before I could, you know, provide some some direction for you. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of belief systems I'd have to discover. There's a lot of influences I'd need to know. It's nice that you do you've done boundaries, and you know, it's with boundaries, uh, so to speak, we can see that this personal responsibility. So, with your degree, you want to be realistic about what you can accomplish. I mean, putting, you know, setting your sights on the absolute best score you can possibly get, you know, no matter what, might be a bit unrealistic. So you want to take the pressure off by saying, you know, I'm going to study and I'm mm -hmm. going to work hard, but I'm going to be good with what I get instead of I have to get this or it's not good enough. So there's one way to take the yeah. pressure off. Uh, um, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's also like um, once I get this money, uh, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I'm going to help. But... So <laughs> it's kind of stupid, you know what I mean? It's not like I want to drive a, you know, the best car or live in the best house. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, kind of... Am I correct in assuming you're in your mid twenties? Yeah, early twenties. Yeah. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah. Uh, well, there's another thing to consider. I mean, that's one of the most stressful times of a person's life is in the time frame, you know, <laughs> eighteen to twenty-five. Really? It is, and that's because okay. there's a transition going on. We're transitioning. I don't know where your living arrangements are, but we typically transition from living at home where our parents kind of yeah. looked after us to now having to make our own way in life. So there's that transition all by itself, which is kind of stressful because the future looks unknown. Then we also put pressure on ourselves to become highly successful, especially if money has been tight in the environment we grew up in. So we want to be successful, so we're putting that pressure on. We have the pressure of school. Um, you know, long gone are the days where, you know, uh, getting an education was fairly relaxed. Now it's high pressure, <laughs> high stress, right? Also really yeah. expensive. It's not cheap anymore. So you've got that yeah. stress. You've also got the stress of, you know, finding a, a partner for the rest of your life. You're looking for a mate. Mm -hmm. So you have that stress mm -hmm. going on. You've got the stress of social interaction. There's just so much happening at that particular time. Plus, the part of the brain that uh, alerts us to danger is in the developing stage. It's not fully developed yet. So we have, you know, all these things going on and, and we're trying to manage it all, yet the brain hasn't completed its development yet. So there's just a whole lot of stressors going on. Pressure to party, you know, socializing and attaining good grades, uh, you know, just so many. So this is a very stressful time for a lot of people. And this is typically when anxiety disorder shows up because of so many stressors. So just that, with keeping that in mind uh, can be helpful. So how do we manage that? Well, this, again, where a therapist who knows more about you would be able to give you really good tips in terms of how to manage all of this so that you can be more realistic about your expectations, so that you can be more content with who you are. Because here's another thing that happens when we come from a background such as you've come from is that our sense of self-esteem is damaged. We feel somewhat inferior in certain ways that we feel we have to compensate for, and often we compensate by hard work, which is also stressful. Does any of that sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot going on. Um, just trying to think of what you might find valuable, uh, just because there's so much going on. And this is where knowing your specifics would be really helpful because it'd be real tangible ways of giving you things did, that you could work on. Sorry. Did Did you ever have those uh, like fears or financial type of fears? Well, I or think worries. I think so because I also came from a background that was financially challenged. I mean, my dad worked all the time. He'd get up, he'd be gone first thing in the morning, come home for a brief supper, have about a five minute nap, and go back to work until he could barely stand up and do the same thing the next day. We were, you know, on the really poor end of the scale. So when I was growing up. You know, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to be in that situation. And so I worked hard, and probably one of the reasons for my drivenness could be attributed to that. <laughs> and there's other things, too. You know, my parent was overcritical, so I put extra pressure on myself. And there was a high, he put high expectations on for success, so I had to do that, too. So there was a lot of reasons. But all of it adds up, and 
The other thing, too, is males often wear that responsibility of financial success more than females. Not that there's a gender difference. It's just that that's how males are wired. We sort of, you know, it's our job to you know do this and we have to be good at it and we want to provide. And, and if you're looking at marriage a little bit down the road, then you're looking at, well, how am I going to support my family? And so all of these pressures all come to bear. One thing I could say is try to take some of the pressure off yourself and let things unfold as they do. Because you know, one thing that's happened for me, and I'm not sure it's going to happen to anybody else, but there's a lot of dreams that I had that haven't come true. You know, I'm 66, uh, six, coming 67, and I thought I'd be in a different place by now if I look back at what my dreams were in my 20s. But if I were to look back and give my own advice, I'd say, well, wait a minute, you know, take things a lot easier. You know, you, you stress about a lot of things that yeah. resolved on their own or never really happened. So take life easier. Still be diligent about the things that are important to you, but don't stress about them. Now, if you have spiritual beliefs, you can also incorporate that too. And back uh, in my, when I was back at that age, I didn't have them. So it was all on me. You know, if I was to go back and do it again with the beliefs I have now, it would have been way easier. Uh, so if you have spiritual beliefs, they might um, be able to take the pressure off. Like, I'm sorry? How exactly? Like, do you pray for um, sustenance or how do, like, how do you do it? How do you implement uh, spiritual okay. aspects into it? Uh, I'm a Christian, so I can only speak of that. But knowing what I know now, uh, God is in charge. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, what was that? I said, go ahead. It's no okay. problem okay. Uh, okay. for me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, all right. Sounds good. Yeah. It's just that sometimes your your voice cuts out and I can't hear everything you're saying. So, uh, <laughs> so, so if I was going to go back and do it again with what I know now, I'd be way easier on myself because as a Christian, I trust in God to provide for me. Like, you know, when you look at the Lord's Prayer, it is give us this day our daily bread. What that means is give us our daily provision. And so... My job isn't to provide for myself. My job is to trust in the provision God gives me. Certainly, he wants me to do the best I can and be diligent about it, but he doesn't want me to stress. You know, that's the same philosophy I use today. Everything that comes to me comes through God first, and it's the same thing with the revenue. And if I'm not happy with what God's providing, then there's a lesson in it for me. It's not that I should be making more. It's like, okay, Lord, what are you trying to teach me in this? Most often, it's I need to trust more. So I would take the pressure off by trusting in God to provide for me, not in trusting for me to provide for myself. I'm not saying that, you know, we don't have to do anything. I think because, again, the motto that I've heard over and over again is we want to work as if everything depends on us and pray as if everything depends on God. So God's going to provide for us, but it's going to be through the effort. So I just want to make sure I'm providing an honest day's effort, but then that's it. And whatever happens after that is up to God. As Charles Stanley says, you know, pray diligently and leave all the consequences up to him. And that includes financial consequences. Doesn't mean he's going to bless us with everything that we want. Typically he doesn't because when we do, when he does that, we end up trusting in the things he's given us rather than him. So I've learned that lesson. But if we come to the place of being peaceful and happy with where God has us in our lives, uh, then there's a lot of um, place where a person can feel relaxed and at peace feeling centered in the moment rather than thinking, you know, years down the road, and how am I going to do this and how am I going to get that and how am I going to, you know, it just makes life so much easier. Mm -hmm. I get it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, for um, yourself, if you're, if you're going to be married in a little while, you also have a partner. You have someone who can help with the finances uh, if that's how you want to arrange it. I'm not sure, you know, how some people, some people would like to have their, you know, their wives or mates stay home, and look after the family which is admirable. I wish we could do that more in today's age, but it may not be financially possible where you are. Sometimes it might require a move, so it's more economically comfortable. I remember one person listening to a phone conversation uh, one year. Uh, people were talking about, well, I can't stay home. I have, you know, both of us have to work. And the kids are in daycare and, you know, we're barely making ends meet. And one person phoned up and says, you know what? We're living a wonderful life and my wife stayed home and we've got five kids and we're loving life. And, and the people said, well, how did you do that? It says, well, we just reduced our expectations. They, you know, they live in a <laughs> not a great big home or they're, you know, over debt and not driving a brand new vehicle. But they lived according to their means and they were quite happy. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, too, that might find helpful is that we just posted this as a meme the other day. People who put great emphasis on finances are far less happy than those who don't. 
So money doesn't make us happy. It's enjoying the things that we have, living in within our comfort zone and our financial means makes us happy. Because happiness is an attitude, isn't it? It's not what we get, it's what we think about. And so there's lots of different ways we can take the pressure off of ourselves by looking at things a bit differently. So it just takes change in those attitudes. But again, since I don't know more about some of the underlying factors, I can't be more specific. These are kind of general. Yeah, but it helps. It really okay. helps. Okay. Um, th there are just only like two quick questions. They yep. won't take long. Yep. Um, I don't want to commit the conversation. Uh, like, for example, when I'm sitting in the office and it's 11 a.m. and um, my, my main problem is like those nerve pains, mm -hmm. um, what is the best uh, kind of behavior to show at that moment? Like, it's 11 p.m. and uh, 11 a.m. and the Symptoms are really like, heavy, it's oh. painful, and I'm sitting there and my boss wants to do, uh, um, expect some results. <laughs> so, sure. uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, just am I assuming correctly that you are a student and working? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, that's stressful too, isn't it? <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, because when you look at it, you know, you're off hours, off hours of work. Uh, are probably consumed with study and class activities and so on and so forth. So your body's engaged most of the day. Uh, so it's going to build up stress. It's just how it works. I mean, you, the other thing we have to keep in mind, too, is that cognitive load, thinking, working out problems, studying, is stressful. It stresses the body. And so when we're, when we're out balancing the body's ability to rest with stress, well, guess where the stress is going to go? It's going to go up. And when stress goes up, so do our symptoms. So when you ask me what can I do at 11 o'clock and your symptoms are spiking, there's probably not much you're going to do because the overall problem is the problem, not just the problem in that moment. And so how does, you know, in your situation, how does one counteract that stress? How do you build enough time in your day to balance the stress out with all the things you got going on? And to me, that's just one of the problems of our society today. We just push ourselves too hard because there's so many things we feel we need to do. We aren't giving the body what it needs. A saying that I like to quote is, we often write checks the body can't cash. We're pushing our stress too far and the body can't <laughs> catch up, right? And that's the reality we deal with. And uh, as the other um, commenter had said earlier, now if you're an introvert who likes to be cerebral and quiet and study, If you've got work going on and study going on and the boss who's demanding, you see how that's going to increase stress. So this is some of the realities we deal with. Our bodies sometimes just aren't equipped to manage the load we give it. So the only way it's going to respond favorably is to change what we do. And I don't know how that's possible in your situation. But how do you do this? I mean, you you help a lot of people. Um, I think your organization is growing. And um, <laughs> I mean... Yeah. How do you do this? Unfortunately, I don't do it as so. well as I should. Uh, but what I do is I do make time each day to meditate and relax. I set limits on the amount of work hours, and I've come to the place by recognizing, you know what, I can only do what I can do each day. Now, my workload is quite a lot because, you know, we're a small organization. We're trying to do a lot of things, and a lot of the work falls to me. So I've really had to be good with not being able to get everything done that I want to get done. It's just, you know, whatever gets done, that's mm. it. And I realized, you know, Lord, if you aren't going to provide the help to move us in this other direction, get all these things done, then I'm just going to have to be good with what you're providing, and that's it. And that's what I do. Yeah. So stress reduction. I make sure I take time off. Uh, I work long hours, but I make yeah. sure I balance it the best I can. And when I notice that I'm pushing myself too hard, then I take time off. I say, okay, that's it. I'm done. My job is to get the body settled. And then I do that again. So, yeah. I will just, I just hope uh, it all goes uh, down at one moment in my life. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I could be patient for whole, uh, my whole life. It's not fun, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, the thing too is, you know, we're in charge of our life experience. We're the ones that get to say how, how far we're going to push ourselves. And sometimes it might come down to expectations. Like for me, for example, there's a lot of things I would like to see done way faster than we're able to do them. So I've had to change my expectation. Changing expectations yeah. means sometimes changing behaviors and say, you know what? I don't need all these great big things that I'm working towards. I'm going to be happy with this because these are the, some of the values. Another thing I was going to say too is, 
you might want to take some time and sit down and write out what your values are. The things you value the most. Uh, it could be, you know, you know, certainly financial security is there. Uh, would be one. I think most families would strive for that so they're financially secure, which means living within your means. But there could be, where's family? Family could be a high one. It could be love relationship could be high. You know, art could be another value. Uh, certainly, you know, the character qualities of honesty and integrity, and those might be values you list. But a lot of times we go through life and we're not even sure what our values are, and so we're just throwing ourselves at everything, trying to cover all the bases, when what we should be doing is setting aside what our values are and then prioritizing them and then focusing on the ones that are at the top. And I know a lot of people don't do this, and I didn't do this till way too late in life, but it sure makes a difference in terms of where we spend our energy and time. Um, well, since I've um, uh, come across your website, it's mainly like I want to work, I want to get money, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, I want to be like you. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Oh that's my. Kind of, yeah. Well, you know, again, if and that's great if you can do that with a balanced approach to life. It's yeah. not great if you're really stressing about it and if you're really striving and pushing and pushing and pushing. Because at 20, you can push pretty hard. Uh, as you get into 40 and 50, your body doesn't like it as much. As you get into 60s, where I'm at now, I notice that I can't work as long as I did without <laughs> my body letting me know. So challenging expectations, setting realistic limits, yeah. and, and enjoying the day that you have. Uh, you know, when you look at children who are outside playing, they seem so happy and carefree. It's because they are. They're focused on the moment. They're not focused on five years down the road or how much I can get next week or what kind of grades I can get. They're focused on enjoying themselves in that moment. And so few adults do that anymore, especially in today's society. We need to get back to focusing more on the moment, enjoying life for the moments we have rather than, you know, trying to pre-plan and overthink and overanalyze all the way down the road. So enjoy the stuff you have because sometimes that's all we have, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll try. Huh? I know it, it requires a change, especially if you come from the background you have where money has a high value. But, you know, the thing is you can change those values. You can set your own priorities. I will. I will. Okay. okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, you for advice. And uh, thank, you again. thank you again for your help. Oh, really you're more than welcome. I wish you all the best. And I, oh, I, do, I do wish you every success, but I also wish you that you will find the joy and peace in the days that you have, right? Thank you. Thank Hi. you. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay,